Good morning, everyone. Uh, start of day three, tropical cyclone Alfred is approaching. So it's Wednesday at the moment. It's supposed to uh, cross at about uh, Thursday evening, Friday morning. Wind's starting to kick up. Doesn't look that too that bad at the moment, but it's been really gusty this morning. So probably in for a pretty hairy next 24, 48 hours. Uh, we'll see whether or not I can make it all the way through this week for the build assist, but uh, we'll just play it by ear. Um, yeah, just hope that everyone's going to be okay up here on the Gold Coast. So we're a couple of videos into the build assist here. And for those that have been watching the previous videos, you would have seen a lot of uh, preparation work involving getting the ribs together for both the flap and aileron and preparation of the skins themselves. So the video that you're seeing at the moment is just me clearing some of the holes in the aileron skin. And you can obviously see the Clecos all in place, which are basically holding all of the ribs in uh, from the previous day's work that we'd assembled. So we had the skeleton of that aileron all ready to go. And then obviously we start to get the rivets in place and begin riveting, which is a pretty satisfying process. Some sharp-eyed builders may have noticed the issue that I was about to create. If you remember way back to day number one uh, and Errol talking about a specific problem that I needed to avoid, I'll refresh your memory. That goes in under, very tight under the top skin, on mm -hmm. the trailing edge of the top skin, and that's why we've got... Uh, Dimpled rivets, they're all a countersink rivet. Yep. So that the rivet head doesn't catch on the skin. That's right. Okay, so I want to show you the uh, warts and all version of my build experience. And I made a decent stuff up this morning. So I went through and I had these all riveted. Problem is, these, um, just due to the way that it's formed, need to actually be countersunk. Uh, so I've caused us a fair amount of uh, manpower to be able to fix this one uh, and de-rivet all of these and get it back and then we now need to go through and dimple these bad boys and get them back into the normal state but I want to show you the build warts and all and I definitely have made a decent uh, stuff up here So once we'd fixed up the aileron, we moved on to the flap skins and started to prepare them as well. One of the things that I noticed was that was different on the flap skin compared to the ailerons was this blue plastic rather than the clear plastic. So much easier to get off and get everything prepared. This just sped up the preparation process so much. The view around Heckfield at the moment as the cyclone starts to creep its way in. See the hills are nearly lost there. Winds really started to pick up. Good morning, it's about 12.30 on Wednesday. Uh, unfortunately, the cyclone is intensifying, so it's now looking like a Cat 3. Looks like it's gonna cut the trip a little bit short, which is a bit unfortunate, because I feel like I was just starting to get into the point where I could start to see some real progress. Uh, this morning, I've gone through and I've uh, basically got the flaps prepared, ready to go, the flap skins. So that with all the ribs and all that sort of stuff that have been done previously, um, we'll sort of see us now start to assemble the flaps. So that'll mean one side of the flaps and ailerons is, is basically done. I'll just give you a look at, uh, at some of the ribs. So we're just starting to box everything up now, get it back in the box and get it up on high ground. You can sort of see around the shed at the moment, all the planes are up and the boys are really uh, busy just trying to get everything up and off the ground. They're expecting somewhere of the vicinity between 300 to 700 mil of rain. So uh, that probably has possibly gone up since they've uh, upgraded the cyclone as well too. So fingers crossed that everything in here is gonna be okay. Uh, my kit will get up and off the ground once it's all done, but yeah, so everything's sort of been uh, prepared and ready to go in the crate. And, uh, and this morning I've just been prepping the skin for the flap. So you can see all the black stuff's been done in underneath here, ready to go. So that's about where I'm at. 
that's that's a wrap unfortunately uh cyclones just getting a little bit too much so time to pack up uh, everything is up on chocks uh, all of the planes are out of harm's way there's my kit with all the hard work in it just didn't quite get to the end maybe next time afternoon everybody it's the end of day three a little bit earlier than normal but we just had to get out of the airfield it was starting to get to the point where we're getting a lot of warnings around cyclone watch and uh, it was the right call to get out of there so fingers crossed that the headquarters for these guys is is not damaged and we're just hoping that the water levels don't get up to what they're expecting as for myself you know i, I guess Today I was really hoping that I was gonna. I was really hoping that I was gonna see a wing start to form. And look, I, I saw an aileron and a flat form, but I didn't get to put it all together. So, you know, the miss the fuel tank component. But if I look back at the start of the week when we sort of sat down and we talked about what the the best outcomes were for me, I needed to learn how to dimple. I needed to learn how to rivet. I needed to learn how to prepare a skin. Um, and then also understand how the skeleton of a wing is formed. So I guess if you were to look at that purely at a helicopter level, I reckon I've ticked off all of those things. So it's just incredibly slow for me at the moment as I'm learning new skills. And I've sort of said to you, I'm not mechanically minded. So this is quite foreign to me, but I'm loving it. And you know, honestly, eight or nine hours out on the field feels like it's three or four hours. So, you know, from that perspective, I'm working on something that I love and it just doesn't feel like I'm working at all. I'm not taking breaks, um, not because the guys wouldn't let me have one. It's just that I'm, I'm just happy. So, yeah, look, I would love to have got to the end of the week and sort of stuck in front of the camera and showed you what a wing looked like. But reality is I just didn't get there. Tomorrow... There's a potential I'm going to uh, stay tonight. Uh, the cyclone is due to hit sort of really late Thursday night. It's, it's Wednesday, Wednesday now. So uh, the workshop back at home base is right next to the accommodation here. So the empennage is obviously in there. So Errol thought that potentially we can do a little bit of work on that empennage to get us kick-started over on there. So, you know, if that happens, then I'll have a little bit more footage to show. Um, otherwise, I'm going to head home and try and beat the front. Uh, but even tomorrow, I think I'll probably cut cut it short and, and take off home a bit early. But, you know, look at it again. I, I just from my perspective, I'm having a ball. Everything's everything's really, really good. Uh, there's, not a, there's not a part of this experience that I don't, I'm not enjoying. Uh, it just sucks that I'm going to have to go home a little bit earlier, but it is what it is. Anyway, so that's the update for the end of day three. Catch gotcha. up.